Beautiful ladies and handsome men, I am not sure what's true or false in this story. I take gossip, tea, rumor, and scandal from yesteryear, from online, from word of mouth, from books, and I ball it up and I tell you guys a story. Now, let's get to it. Scandalites and says so squad, come on in the room, baby. As a matter of fact, when y'all get in here, type here in the comments and let me know it's real. Y'all saw the title, baby. Today we're going to be talking about number one comedian, Moms Mabley, but even more scandalous than her life is the part two video, and that's on Gladys Bentley. Let's get to it. Loretta Mary Aiken, AKA Moms Mabley, was born on March 19th, 1894, in the city of Brevard, North Carolina. Now, little Loretta was actually one of 16 children born to a Mr. James Aiken and a Mrs. Mary Smith. And her mother and father were apparently very successful people around town. A uh, rumor has it her father James owned multiple successful businesses and her mother uh, Mary kept a boarding house in their home. Now baby, I know it's early in the story, honey. Moms can't even get to telling her jokes yet, baby. Before I got to say trigger warning, put on your doggone helmet because it's time to get to some scandalous tea. Now the folks say that a lot of those boarders that came and lived in the Aiken family home were single men. And there's this one rumor that alleges that one of those single men was an older black man. This man was said to have had eyes for little Loretta, but the problem was she was little Loretta. She was actually only years old. Well, allegedly this man did not care about any of that. And he took her and did things that he was not supposed to do. Now that's disturbing in itself. Well, leave it to me to make it even more disturbing for you. And before I get y'all's blood boiling, let me make sure to say this next part, what I'm about to tell you is absolute speculation. I cannot see anywhere where this was said to be a fact, but there is definitely a group of people that speculate that mom's assault may not have just happened out of the blue. These people feel like there's a great chance that her parents knew about it. And there are like three reasons why they have this speculation. The first one was because after Loretta or moms was assaulted, there doesn't seem to be any record of anybody going to law enforcement about the issue. So people wonder why, why wasn't it reported? The second reason is because after this assault, Loretta ended up getting pregnant. Again, nothing seems to have been reported to authorities, but what did happen is her parents made sure to snatch the baby away from Loretta and give it up for adoption. So people questioned that. Why wasn't it reported? And also why was this baby just kind of snatched away in the heat of the night and given up for adoption? But here's the thing. I can pretty much kind of figure out why they didn't report it to law enforcement because unfortunately law enforcement was trying to see if they can get in and get something going too. Cause baby, listen at this. Two years later, the local white sheriff did the exact same thing to Loretta. Yes, he took her. And do you want to hear the scandalous thing, child? The scandalous thing, child, is that Loretta ended up pregnant again. And once again, she was laid in the bed looking like doggone Seely because once again, gossip claims her parents came in, took the baby, and gave the baby up for adoption. Now, like I said, the family probably couldn't go to the authorities because look what the authorities was doing as well. But then that other group of people takes this to mean that the sheriff was probably given the opportunity for this to happen. That her parents possibly could have been pimping. And that's why it was just so easy for them to accept this had happened and, you know, just get rid of the babies that came from it. I'm not gonna lie, it's pushing the envelope for me because it's hard for me to imagine these people who allegedly had all of these successful businesses and stuff like that, like they were already making pretty good money. So why would they have to resort to something like that unless they were just like truly, truly greedy? I am eager to hear your opinions about that. Do you think option one, that her parents' pimp hand was strong? Do you think option two, that she was actually manipulated and groomed by the men who did this? Like they didn't necessarily just like force, you know what I'm saying? But they had uh, talked her head mentally into doing this. Or do you think option three, where it really was that these two men actually grabbed her up and did the stuff? 
regardless of whichever one of those options is correct. After that last bit of abuse, moms was doggone finished living with her family, honey. And she was complaining about the things that were happening to her. So the folks say that it was her grandmother that told her, hey, Loretta, you don't have to deal with any of that stuff that's going on. You can actually just run away, run to find a better life. And this is what moms did. At 14 years old, she ran away to Dallas, Texas. And when she got there, baby, the state anthem may as well have been, I choose you, baby. Because there was pimp after pimp after pimp telling her she was real pretty. And if she just worked for them, they can make big money real fast. It's either work for me, get this fast money, or go work for the white folks, go clean some houses or something. But Loretta wasn't stupid. She knew there was a third option, and that was entering show business. She started to go to all of these local clubs, and she would uh, put on dance shows, and she also would sing. She would add other stuff to her show. I don't think she was cracking jokes at this stage. Again, I'm not sure, but I know for sure that she was talking back and forth with the audience at this time. Well, it just so happened that the famous duo, Butterbeans and Sue, Susie ended up showing up at one of the clubs she was working at. And they told her straight up, hey baby, listen, you are too good for this little BS that you're doing right here. I don't know what they're paying you, but you're really, really good. You need to actually come join up with us. And so that's what Loretta did. She left with Butterbeans and Susie and she went back to Ohio with them. And when Loretta got to Ohio, they put her in vaudeville, AKA the Chitlin Circuit. You remember how I told you she had this open dialogue with her audience on stage? Well, now she turned that into something something else, she turned that into actually telling jokes. So immediately her quality, her star started to rise above the other. She definitely was the new hot-ish on stage. And that's not all, baby. When it came to the boys backstage, she was also all the rage. And one of these was a guy named Jack Mabley. He also was an up and coming performer. And soon they were a couple. So things were really looking up for Loretta, AKA Moms Mabley around this time. She was certainly surfing on the clouds, but while things were looking up for her, things were looking down to the doggone ground for her family that she left back home. Now the folks say that about a year after Loretta left home, her daddy James, who had always tried to kind of be recognized in the community, have a big name, stuff like that, that. Well, the local fire department ran into a problem. They didn't have enough workers, and so they needed volunteers to fill the spaces. James, not one for turning down an opportunity to be seen, signed up as one of those volunteers. Baby, they say about a week later, that man went on an emergency fire run when the next thing you doggone know, that fire truck exploded with James still holding on, baby. Said James and everybody else that was on the fire truck was blown to pieces. Then, to make matters worse, the place that they were on their way to save still ended up burning down. Tragic. Tragic. And again, I don't know what type of father James was. Don't know if he was a good man or a bad man, so I can't tell you if Loretta mourned him or not. But even if she didn't mourn him, I'm sure his wife Mary did mourn him. Because for one, that was her husband and she loved him. And then for two, he left her to take care of about 16 children. So that was a super heavy burden on her shoulder. That's probably what she was thinking about three years later on Christmas Day when she was walking home from church because her mind was occupied to the point that when a big truck came rolling through, she was not able to react quickly enough before it knocked her behind clean over, killing her instantly. So just like that, Loretta, AKA moms left home and within four to five years later, both of her parents were dead. But one thing's for sure, she kept right on pushing when it came to her career. By this time, she was not just performing in the nightlife, she was living the nightlife as well. Mixing and mingling with the night scene crowd, drinking, and she probably didn't do any drugs, but you know, basically just living the nightlife, the clubbing lifestyle pretty much. Well, it appears that her family at home was absolutely ticked off by this behavior. Baby, they say Loretta had had a show in, I believe, Tennessee. Afterwards, she was backstage, you know, laughing, partying, drinking, living it up. Baby said one of her doggone older brothers burst through the door backstage, grabbed her up off the doggone chair she was sitting on, and he called Loretta every single name but a child of God. As a matter of fact, one of the things he told her is that she wasn't a child of God, that she was a sinner, that she was a heathen, and that she ought to be shamed 
going around telling the world that her name was Loretta Aiken acting the way she was acting. He said show business, all of that stuff was sinful. And basically bringing reproach and ill repute on their family. And some people thought that this was going to end her career in show business. Not her, honey. Instead of leaving show business, what she actually did was go talk to her boyfriend, Jack Mabley, and tell him that she's gonna start using his name for show business. She would no longer be Loretta Aiken. She would now be Jackie Mabley. So now it's Jack and Jackie Mabley. Thankfully, her guy was cool with this and even when they broke up, he was still cool with her using his name. And don't ask me why they broke up because I didn't see any of that in the reports, but baby, it could have been because of the crunchy munchy, honey. And you guys who watched the Shaka Khan video know what the crunchy munchy is, baby. Licking from a person who don't got a dickin'. So the crunchy munchy basically means some bisexual activity. And moms was one of these persons. And the folks say that around this time, baby, she definitely was doing some licking it up and licking it down. Now, I say that this is possibly the reason she and Jack broke up, but to be honest with you, I highly doubt it. Back at that time on the Chitlin circuit in Vaudeville, almost everybody was bisexual, especially the female. And even if Jack didn't like it, baby, there definitely was another man out here who did like it. Because check me out, listen up close. When moms was around 17, 18, this is when she started displaying bisexual behavior. Behavior. And when she was around 25, 26, this is when she started acting strictly as a lesbian. Well, allegedly, somewhere in between these two ages, moms got with some man, honey, and ended up having four children by this guy. But once again, even this relationship, because I don't think it was ever a marriage, so even this relationship did not last. And that is because by the time she was 25, 26 years old, moms Mabley was said to be doing strictly lesbian sexual activity. Now, now she was still working the chitlin circuit around this time so she had not come all the way out yet saying that she was a lesbian. In fact on the chitlin circuit that was really kind of a no-no. There was a lot of bisexual lesbian stuff going on behind the scene but when it came to that dog on stage out in front of the audience everybody acted straight. So even if moms wanted to come out as a straight lesbian when she was around 25, 26 years old, she could not do it because she was performing with the Chitlin Circuit. So in the year of 1921, when moms was 27 years old, she had booked a steady gig at a club called Cunning. Moms wanted to be her true self on her first night working at Connie's, I do believe, she premiered herself as what she was. She came out on stage with a doggone suit on. Her hair was cut short and slicked back. Her shoes were shined so hard you could see your reflection in them. She had a handkerchief in her pockets. Oh baby, she was clean, honey. And she definitely was the man of the hour. Any high pitchness that she may have possessed in her voice before was gone now. Now she was definitely speaking with a uh, deep voice, like a male bravado. Now, Moms still sang with this new persona, but it definitely was not accompanied by no dancing where she's shaking her butt and wiggling her boobs. That's over with. Now her songs were very smooth and velvety, and she pimp walked around the stage strutting and telling her jokes. And honey, the jokes were probably the biggest change of all. Moms was now quipping how she could pull any little young dame out in the crowd. Her jokes consisted of things she had to do to turn a woman. Once they turn, Baby, they wasn't going back. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. I tried to be like moms. But that's the kind of uh, personality that she had taken on. Well, this whole persona became a big hit at Connie's club. People gravitated to it. She was so successful that Connie's nightclub sought to hire people just like her. They basically had an opening for any type of lesbian entertainers. So soon there was another lesbian entertainer named Gladys Bentley who actually had started off at the club with moms. Well, eventually she started to grow like way bigger than moms maybe. So much so that Gladys Bentley almost became the de facto lesbian across dressing entertainer. And since this was the case, sometimes moms would lose bookings to Gladys Bentley. And since Gladys Bentley was getting most of the lesbian entertainment bookings, sometimes moms Mabley was left out in the doggone cold. So shoo, her behind had to make her money some kind of way. She had to book shows with people who were offering. And a lot of people who were offering her shows were people who wanted her to do her old routine. The routine that she was doing while she was in the uh, menstrual shows on the Chitlin circuit. 
And this meant that Manly Behind Moms, a.k.a. Jackie Mabley, had to go back and sometimes put on a doggone dress. She had to go back to swinging her hips, singing and dancing and doing those quirky little jokes that she used to do when she was on the menstrual circuit. As a matter of fact, here's a 1933 poster that is pretty much evidence of moms switching her performances. Look right here how they build moms. Jackie Mabley, the world's most beautiful Creole girl. You can pretty much tell that moms was dressed like a female when she did this show. So for a while, moms was performing as two characters. She was performing as this uh, lesbian male dressing character, and then she also was performing more like the character that she did on the Chitlin circuit. And this is kind of how things went for most of the 1930s, but soon the feminine characters took all the way over because mom was about to introduce a character that would change her life and the whole face of comedy forever. Baby, she thought she had been doing something before, I promise you she was not ready for the explosion that was about to become her career. And before we talk about the main event that brought success into Moms Mabley's life, let me give you a little background about it first. Throughout Loretta, aka Jackie, aka Mom's career, she had always been a very cool and caring person, but she did it in a very sassy way. She was one of them people like, you know, uh, gal, what you mean you ain't eight? Mm, mm, mm. Here, I guess I got another piece of chicken in my skirt. You want it? Baby, listen, you better bundle up out there. It's cold outside. Lord have mercy, Jesus. This boy ain't got no coat. Here, boy, take one of my blankets. You're kind of getting on my nerves a little bit, but I don't want to see you freeze to death out there. You know, kind of one of those people. She was constantly taking care of people. Not only was she doing it in a physical way like I just described, she also was always giving people career and life advice. So for most of her career, people backstage would call her mom. Suddenly, Jackie Mabley gets an idea that this mom's person should become a character in her show. She would make this character an old woman and this old woman would be feisty, honey. So in comes the old raggedy long dress or nightgown. In comes the dusty bucket hat and the beat up house shoes or the beat up slide. And out comes an old little woman on stage telling jokes about how she slipped off her panties on an airplane in front of everybody. Telling folks that she's an old woman, but baby, she still loves to hunch. And also telling them same folks that she wouldn't dare hunch a man her age. She don't want no old man. Baby, telling them folks that the only thing an old man can do for her was point her in the direction of a young man. And although moms at this time was a young lady, she was probably in her late 40s, early 50s, she was a young lady, the people did not know that. They actually truly thought she was an old behind woman. So whose grandma was this on stage talking about doing all this filthy, nasty behind stuff? People were disturbed and they were a little bit disgusted. But baby, they just could not get enough of this old doggone woman talking like this. Her popularity boomed. I'm talking about it skyrocketed. And the success of this character even brought a set title to her career. Like before she had the mom's character, I think she was just kind of known as a female entertainer with comedic abilities or something like that. Now she was a female stand-up comedian. In fact, she was known as one of the first female stand-up comedian. And if there was anybody else out there with that title at that time, baby, they didn't have nothing on moms. She ruled the scene. She'd started performing with Pig Meat Markham and they started to make several comedy albums. She'd also performed her stand-up comedy in every big club by now. The Cotton Club, Lenox Avenue, Savoy Ballroom, every single place except one. And that was the Apollo Theater. And that's because the Apollo Theater's rules was that they didn't allow female comedians there. Well, soon something happened that really made they behind think twice. The Apollo Theater booked a male comedian on a certain night and I think it was another theater called the Lafayette or the Lafayette Theater they uh booked Moms Mabley allegedly on this same certain night well when the doors opened Moms show 
outsold that male comedian show at the Apollo about three, four times. And you better believe after that, the Apollo show enough opened their doggone doors to Moms Mabley. And so she has the distinction of being the first female comedian to ever perform at the Apollo Theater. So Mom's stand-up comedy career was really taking her to heights that she never thought she would really achieve. Moms sailed through the 1940s. As a matter of fact, the 1940s is the time that she started performing in a whole bunch of recorded comedic shorts. And I don't know this for sure, but there's a great chance that a lot of these shorts were actually shown in uh, movie theaters before the movie started. So when the 1950s came around, her live shows were by now prime time, baby. And Moms Mabley was in high demand, which means by the time the 1960s got here, oh, she was on her way to being a household name. Her audience started to change and become even more diverse. And by more diverse, I'm not talking about white folks because a lot of white folks already knew about her and were already uh, watching her shows. I'm talking about upscale people, wealthy people. As a matter of fact, in 1962, she was invited to perform at Carnegie Hall. Now you and me both know that to a lot of celebrities, that's the doggone big fish right there, baby. So sooner or later, all type of TV appearances and TV shows were calling her name. In fact, she had multiple appearances on the uh, Smother Brothers Comedy Hour and was featured on a number of hit comedy specials. I believe it was also in the 1960s when something big happened for Moms Mabley. See, since she had left home, she had never returned. Well, uh, allegedly she ended up having a show in her home state. There was this huge hoopla about Moms Mabley coming home, you know, the stars coming back. Baby, Moms got on that dog on stage and probably wasn't up there for about 30 minutes when she heard a gunshot. Moms froze mid-word. Not only did she freeze, the audience froze because everybody was trying to figure out where did the gunshot come from? Child, they said about two more gunshots let off in quick succession and all you saw was a nightgown flying through the air. Honey, they said Mums Mabley was hightailing it down them theater steps so fast, the only thing that you could really make out was the nightgown. The folks say that once everything calmed down that they was trying to get, they was trying to get Mums to uh, return back to the theater because I think what happened is one of the audience members got into it with somebody and so they started shooting at that person. Well, allegedly everything was cleared out. They had uh, wanted to get the show back on track baby uh mom shot the deuces child and i don't blame i would have been gone too because y'all doing too much anywho throughout the 60s and the 70s mom's success continued to come she even showed up on the pearl bailey show then honey opened up for one of the biggest acts of the decade ike and tina so mom's mabley was living her best life honey she was not slowing down she was enjoying this success and when in 1974 she was asked to star in a film called a Amazing Grace, Moms jumped at the chance. But honey, by this time, Moms was around 80 years old, so even though she jumped at the chance, her heart did not. As a matter of fact, her heart wasn't in it at all, and she ended up having a heart attack while she was on set. Movie producers and directors were willing to let her go from the movie so she can get her rest and get her health back. But Moms didn't want to do that. She was telling everybody who would listen, hey, I have two grandmothers, and both of my grandmothers are still alive. They are 106 and 100, I think she said. And she said as long as her grandmothers were still alive, she knew that she was going to live to an old age too. So within three weeks after her heart attack, she was back on set, albeit with a pacemaker. And her heart problems just ended up becoming worse and worse. So much so that on May 23rd, 1975, Moms Mabley ended up passing away at the age of 81 years old. This is the end of the old Hollywood scandalous tale of Miss Moms Mabley. Please go ahead and leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you are new here or even if you are old here and haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and then go a little further and click the notification bell and go a little further than that and turn the notifications on for all. Also, please don't stray too far because we have sort of a part two video of this video coming up, except that video is going to be about Gladys Bentley. So anyways, I'll see y'all soon. Bye.